This is a Fox 5 and Hot 97 special edition of Street Soldiers, 50 Years of Hip Hop with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Hip Hop's Queen's Roots. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. From trailblazing legends to artists making hits today, Queens holds a prominent place in hip hop with classic songs and exciting new sounds. We're honoring all of it as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Run DMC from Hollis, Queens is widely considered to be one of the most influential hip hop groups of all time. Joseph Simmons, now known as Reverend Run, DMC, who's Daryl McDaniel, and the late Jam Master J took 1980s hip-hop beyond existing borders, both artistic and geographic. They took chances. <laughs> like partnering with heavy metal group Aerosmith to create the hit Walk This Way. Breaking the, the walls down, making hip-hop commercial, making, um, you know, opening that gateway on MTV and BET. Um, but I've, after Run DMC, yeah, LL, and then from there, it just, it just, it goes crazy. The Ripper. The Ripper. LL Cool J has decades of hit songs and continues to sell out stadiums. Nas came up in NYCHA's Queensbridge houses to create his album classic Illmatic. Another Queensbridge resident, a teenage girl named Roxanne Chante, showed that females could rap just as hard as the guys. A tribe called Quest earned hip-hop millions of new fans with their unique sound. The incredible rapping skills of Nicki Minaj earned her chart-topping hits and respect in the streets, blazing a trail in music and endorsements. You could go from Queens to the world. Male or female, she did it as a female, but she took Queens to the entire world. Look at records like Starships. Starships were meant to fly like, that's 128 beats per minute. That's a pop record. That's a top 40 record. Queens also produced the duo Mob Deep with Havoc and the late Prodigy. The work impacted another Queens mega success story, 50 Cent and the G Unit. Tony Yayo explains the duo's impact. Prodigy, Mob Deep, because when Shook Ones came out, like that's when Queens got respect. Like, you ain't a crook, son, you a Shook One. Like, you know, like, Queens, we always had the hard people, oh, when you go to jail, Queens, Queens, Queens. But Queens is, is real. It's like, and and when, when Mob Deep made Shook Ones and Nas dropped Illmatic, it, it was over. The late rapper Chinks embodied the hope that Queens would have yet another superstar. But tragically, his life was cut short by gun violence, just as his star was rising. Oh, for the man, oh, for the up and coming artist Kaya Baby says with all the Queen's success stories, the message is that anything is possible. For me, it was like, yo, and, and look at the like people from here really could turn their lives around and make it doing music. Let's find out more from our panel. Joining us is DJ Sherrod. He's from Queens. He's a heavy hitter DJ. You hear him on Hot 97 on Holiday Mix Weekends. He's also heard on Shade 45. DJ Sherrod, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be part of this discussion. We appreciate it. Also with us is the one and only Tony Yayo. Yes, that Tony Yayo, uh, representing Southside, Southside yeah. Queens. He's one of yeah. the founding members of the G Unit, and his latest project is called The Loyal, and it's all, on all streaming platforms. Tony, thank you so much for being with us. Show sure, Lisa, you know I love you. Thank you. No, great to have you back. Thank you so much. Also with us is Kaya Baby. She's from Queens. She's an, an up and coming new hip hop artist. Her latest single is called New Energy. Kaya, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. No, super excited. And also with us is Chuck Creekburg. He is the CEO and co-founder of allhiphop.com. Chuck, great to have you with us as always. Thank you, salute. Thank you very much. Tony Yayo, I'm gonna start with you on this. What does it mean to be from Queens to you, I mean, from for me it's big because my favorite rap group of all time, I'm gonna say, is Run DMC from the beginning. And uh, I remember that song. It's Christmas time in Hollis, Queens. Mom's cooking chicken and collard greens. It was it was a big record, and I think Run DMC and LL Cool J is like that was big for me. Like going to rock on um, um, Farmers Boulevard and seeing the rap, and they'd be like, "Yo, this is where you know." Uh, LL J is from Red DMC. This is where they're from Hollis. You know, rest in peace, Jam Master J. You know, and he, he taught 50 Cent how to do songs with song format. 
So I feel like, and I met Jay before, and I feel like uh, Queens is just Jam Master Jay, Run DMC. Uh, it's a list goes on, but LL Cool J and Run DMC was so close to our neighborhood that it just feels like I'm a part of it. You know? No, definitely, Chuck. When you look at the artists, all the great artists that have have come through, uh, come from Queens, representing Queens, who comes to mind for you? I mean, definitely start with Run DMC. Um, like Tony Ayo said, breaking the, the walls down, making hip hop commercial, making, um, you know, opening that gateway on MTV and BET. Um, but af after Run DMC, yeah, LL. And then from there, it just, it goes crazy, basically. You know, you got your, your Roxanne Shantae's, your MC Shans, and, and um, you know, and then they had a little slip up with KRS-One, but... After that, it was like revenge. You know what I mean? It's still cool because we that KRS one wreck and we liked it, even though he was disappointed. Right. <laughs> He's records in the world. I can't even front. Yeah, nah. Nas and them said, you know, Nas said after that they were coming back, and that's what they did. You know, right. Nas, Mob Deep, CNN, you know, Capone Noriega, even you know, even like a Tribe Called Quest and all that. You know, so. Um, Queens is is really dope in, in in terms of having that range and that you know different flavors of of music. No, definitely. Kai, co coming up in Queens, were there certain artists that you looked at that maybe resonated more with you because they were from Queens or that inspired you? Um, absolutely, definitely. Um, this guy right here, Yayo, yeah, yo, I consider him, you know, legendary. Um, you know, coming up and when I was coming up, when Jimmy came out, it was like so big for us because it was so close to home. And like, yo, these guys, like, they they from right here, and it's like he mentioned LL. I was probably like a baby, so LL to me is like out of reach. By the time I'm like a, a young kid or a young teenager, LL was like superstar. You don't. You don't think you'll ever run into someone. I was like, oh, that's cool. LL's from Queens. That's dope. Like, we got somebody like LL. And like he said, run DMC. But they were older. So when G-Unit came out, for me, it was like, yo. It, it, look at this. Like, people from here really could turn their lives around and make it doing music. And at that time, I wasn't even really, I wasn't rapping. I used to play basketball. But rappers like that, just definitely. And then Nicki Minaj came out. And they were like, wow. Female, amazing. We definitely, like. Well, I'm going how we gonna forget the queen, Kaya, right? We are up there. Can't never forget her. Yeah. No, never. That that era right there was just like for Queens, it was just so amazing. For me, being from Queens, it was like we had Jimmy and that Nicki and Nah, it was dope. What's special about Nicki to me is she's from Southside. So right. You no know, L is more the north side. Right. Nikki from Southside, she right there. So like I said, when people is right there and you see them blow, like the, the energy with your new record, there's your new energy, excuse me. I mean, I love to see, you know, the DJs playing it and you going hard and rep the Queens right now more than anybody. There's more to come, stay with us. Chuck, you are very proud of something that you have totally representing Queens. Can you show that to us yeah, and describe it too for our radio audience? Yeah, so I mean, everybody that doesn't know, Run DMC broke broke the wall down and and really opened the floodgates for hip hop when they endorsed Adidas without getting paid. Everybody went and got the shell to Adidas back in the day, and uh, unfortunately, rest in peace, Jam Master J. He passed away, but you know he was like a a king of styles, so everybody was really copying Jam Master J the whole time. Tony, in terms of the in terms of the Queen's sound, how did that influence you when you were starting out with G Unit? Tell us about what that was like. It was big for me because you know Fifty was signed to J, so I got a chance to meet Onyx, and I remember um, Kill 'Em in a Club was the first record that Fifty was on, and I was just happy to be around Onyx because I I liked Onyx for all their songs from Slam to uh to throw your guns in the air to everything that they had at that time. And I remember doing a video with 50 and uh, Sun C. We, we, it was on a hockey rink. It was, we was playing hockey. You watched that video. I seen Sun C fall and he busts his head open. Ambulance came. So it, that was a crazy moment for me and hip hop. It dies. Nostradamus tour. That was big for me. I'm like, wow, I want to bust with, with Niles. I couldn't believe it. I was like the biggest group yet. 
it was it was crazy for me because I thought it'd be wild and stuff on the bus, but Nas was actually reading books and stuff like that. So I'm like, wow, crazy. This is how Nas comes up with all his music by reading these books. So those were two <laughs> big Queens experiences for me for, you know, being around Onyx B, Jim Master J and uh, being around Nas, you know, even though he's from the Queens Bridge, you know, I mean, I, I love hip hop. Kaya, in terms of the Queens, uh, some people have said Queens was always more unique because, of course, Queens Bridge is a housing development. There's a lot of, you know, cl apartments close by together. But a lot of people, a lot of parts of the of, of the borough, there's more space than there is, like in the Bronx or Brooklyn. And that that affected how people would party. It affected how the sound. What do you think about that? Queens is bigger than a lot of people think. So, like, you heard Yayo mentioned earlier, you know, um, they got LL and stuff. They're from the north side of Queens. People consider that north side. Um Someone who's not from Queens would probably call it something silly like Northside Jamaica. And someone looked at you like, what? <laughs> we just call it Northside. And then you got the South Side where there are a little bit more um, housing, project housings on top of each other and next to each other. So it did, growing up, it did affect, um, you know, partying or just traveling. I know a lot of my friends from, you know, other side of the town were not able to come to my side of the town or not allowed to because it'll be considered dangerous. Right now, especially for the younger generation, so they could see like, all right, we we stick together and then look out for each other. We could be as big as any other borough, any other state, whatever big is the world, if we just stick together. No, absolutely, and that's so important. Sharad, what about the you're you're from a long line of DJs from Queens that got their start in Queens. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Were there were there some that inspired you in particular? I mean, it started with Jam Master J, rest in peace. You know, Jam Master J set the foundation, not only as a DJ, but as a trendsetter and as a producer and as somebody who would pay it forward and help people as a producer in music to put other people on. Like a lot of the stuff we've talked about today is artists. And even if you look at Kaya right now, I remember seeing on Instagram in the summer, there was a picture of Kaya and 50 Cent, and it was the first time I'd seen it. It was some outdoor festival, if I'm not mistaken. And if you look at 50's lineage and where that all comes from, everything comes from Jam Master J. So the DJ is really critical, is a really cr critical component in the elements of hip hop that sometimes gets overlooked. The lyricism, spitting the bars. Was there a certain Queens thing? Like, oh, wait, guys, get your style when you were starting out with G Unit. When it comes to the lyricism and 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 and, and, and Queens, it's so many dope artists. Like we Nikki is like, come on, who could who could write right, bars? Exactly. We don't talk Nikki, about Nikki enough, man. Yeah, Nikki, like Nikki, she she go bar for bar with any dude she got on a Kanye record and ripped it. I'm a monster. She she killed it. Like, so it's like I always big up Nikki because I feel like she's one of the best lyricists that even came out of Queens. Period, ma period, male or female, right? Male or female. She's one of the best artists coming out of Queens. You know, shout to Nikki. And she's right, like Kaya said, she's right up the block. So so that win right there feels like I'm a part of that win. Just like when G-Unit dropped, the whole Queens felt like they was a part of that win. Kaya take off this year. We all feel like we are part of that win because Kaya's from right there. We could take a, a dollar van right to right to 40 projects. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's it's just the lyricism for me is always going to be dope lyrics and all and, and all and, and, and queen. Kaya, what about the the res the respect for uh, Nikki or not people not paying enough attention to what she's accomplished because she she was a real trailblazer or is a real trailblazer in so many ways. Uh, she's definitely a truck writer. Like he just mentioned, how LL been through eighties, nineties, and early two thousands. Nikki also rapped her way through eras that a lot of her younger fans will never have no idea about, like um, um, DVDs, and she was rapping in in the staircases or rapping outside with dudes. It would just be Nikki and a bunch of dudes. Um, a lot of her fans will never know that side of Nikki. So people see just the Barbie side, and absolutely the lyrics is there, but they didn't see the gritty Nikki, and I feel like a lot of people got to get intact with that, but that's why I love that she still does her thing as far as making hit records, but she also incorporates those bars in there to remind you, like, don't play with me. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still, still rapping. 
Probably they don't know the gritty Nicky used to be in a, a studio called Sock Passe over there on the north side with stacked bundles and Maserati Fox. A lot of people didn't know that. A lot of people didn't know she rap with with uh with stacking everybody. They didn't know she rap with uh Maserati Fox. Rest in peace to Maserati Fox. But that that was the grit. She used to be in the studio, you know, eating Chinese food with everybody and chill. Yeah. Look how far she's, look how far she's came then. Exactly. Sherrod, in terms of in terms of Nikki, because I, I wanted to, I want to give her a little bit more props too. It's like when you when you look at her achievement, because we've had we've had such an explosion of of female of female rappers. Women were really in a lot of ways not taken seriously. I don't think in, 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 in hip hop. What what what's your take on Nikki? I think she opened up the floodgates for everybody. You know, from what Kaya said, being a trailblazer and being a trendsetter and and opening up and saying you could go from Queens to the world. Male or female, she did it as a female, but she took queens to the entire world. Look at records like Starships. Starships were meant to fly. Like, what? that's 128 beats per minute. That's a pop record. That's a top 40 record. To this day, on Hot 97's recurring playlist, we have Moment for Life. Moment for Life is a record that is not only a, a, a party record. It is people walk out to their wedding to that song. That's Nicki Minaj. So when you talk about the bars and the stairwells and being in Sac Passe studio and coming from that and taking it global to having timeless records, that's a Queens thing. Queens is timeless and that will never be taken away. Sherrod, in terms of the the future for Queens having maintaining its kind of imprint on hip hop, what do you see coming up, or what trends do you see? Because you're in the clubs, you're all over the place, um, you know, with artists, with fans. You can tell in the club, I think, get a sense of you know what people are really liking and really feeling. What do you see ahead for for hip hop artists from Queens, like Kaya? My perspective is that hip hop has been global. It's going more global. And now with the resources, the digital resources that we have, the easy connectivity that we have, hip hop from the boroughs and specifically from Queens has taken over the world. Where We as a culture uh, create impact in everything outside of music. So when you talk about what basketball is, basketball's energy comes from hip hop, basketball's fashion comes from hip hop. If you look at the globe as a whole, Rolling Loud, the festival just went to Thailand. Mass Appeal, Mass Appeal, Nas's label opened up in India. They got Mass Appeal India. They got Def Jam Thailand. Def Jam came out of Queens. Mass Appeal comes out of Queens. So I believe musically is where it starts, but culture is where it's impacted as a whole. And Queens has everything to do with that. And we have our stamp and I think it's just going to keep going and, you know, salute to Kaya baby. I didn't even know Kaya was going to be on here. <laughs> and when I was thinking about what this conversation was, and I knew the question would come up about who's next or what's next. It's really true that the leading name and the leading personality coming out of the borough is 1000% Kaya. And I think she's the next generation of how we're going to see. It's it's what we're gonna see. You know, she's outside every night. Don't make me cry, Kaya. So what the, what's ahead for you? you? Got all these great endorsements here. I know, right? And it's so funny because, like you said, I didn't expect to see you on here either. And I tried to uh, catch up with him last weekend for his birthday. So now that, like he said, I'd be so busy. So when he did the club things, I I was you know doing my own bookings when I was free. I tried to run into him. those guys. Crazy seeing him on here. And um, just getting an acknowledgement from them because they've been in the game, you know, for years. Like I could learn, I'm still learning to this day. Like every time, um, even with my freestyles, when a DJ will request it, because uh, Flex will request uh, freestyles for me and Kim. Hold, hold on, Kaya, tell them what Fifty Court. When we was in Brooklyn, we in front of thousands of people. Yeah, I was. I was gonna get that. Fifty. Fifty said, Kaya, come up here and spit. And I knew she was seasoned because she came up there without a problem and did her numbers. That's what it's about.
Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Hip Hop's Queen's Roots. You can share it and watch it again on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.